Kanye West sparking a lot of outrage tonight with his unhinged comments about slavery. I want to bring in now Republican strategist Sir Michael Singleton, CNN political commentator Mark Lamont Hill, and writer and journalist Kieran Mayo. Good evening. Good evening. To all hey, of Don. you. Hey, Don. So today Kanye West managed to shock us again while at TMZ's offices today to film TMZ Live. He made these stunning comments about slavery. You hear about slavery for 400 years? For 400 years? That sounds like a choice. <laughs> like, you was there for 400 years and it's all of y'all? You know, like, it's like we're, we're mentally in prison. I like the word prison because slavery goes di too, too direct to the uh, idea of blacks. It's like slavery, Holocaust, Holocaust Jews, uh, slavery is blacks. So prison is something that unites us as one race, blacks and whites being one race. Uh, that we're one, we're, we're the human race. Uh, Kieran, slavery for 400 years is a choice. What do you, what's your reaction? It's, again, unfortunate, you know. We're all worried about Kanye, but at this point, we're all also angry and offended and hurt. And he's also factually incorrect, right? So slave rebellions, armed slave rebellions, have happened in every slaveholding state in this country. We have resisted slavery for as long as we've been here. His association with slavery um, is so just uninformed. And I think the problem with Kanye today is that he's taken for granted that his lack of information, it can pass mm -hmm. for opinion in a public sphere. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 particularly for his young black fans and followers, I'm worried for them because I'm not sure that they can make the distinction between um, where he's going and the truth. Well, and that's why we're, that's why we're covering it so much, because in my estimation, this is dangerous. And again, as I've said all along, and you said on, Kanye can say whatever he wants. He can sure. believe whatever he wants, but he, he should understand the power of his platform. He has to be responsible, as Van said today. Yeah. And he has to know his facts before. He thinks, he thinks, Mark, that this is a new conversation. Right. That he's having, he's, the, because he just discovered it. He just discovered some information, and I want him to discover information. I also want him to discover books. Yes. And I want him to read those books yes. and read that information before he offers a public opinion. But in the Kanye West universe, at least right now, whatever he thinks is the most important thing, facts be damned. And that's something that's super dangerous. In many ways, he is like Trump. I mean, I, I think he's wrestling with some stuff. But <laughs> I was just going to say who's yeah, that? It's, it's I, I see why he likes Donald Trump. And that, that, that's he, his, taught, he says why he likes him. Yeah, I mean, he's a rich, successful white man who does whatever he wants under any circumstances. He doesn't need facts. He doesn't need anything else. He doesn't read. And he just says what he thinks. And he doesn't read. I mean, Don, I see why he likes Donald Trump. But the thing is that he, uh, he talks about the history. He doesn't know his, he, he, he doesn't even know his history of Donald Trump. Right. Yeah. It's, which is, so he just hasn't read about Donald Trump as well, because then maybe he, maybe he would not be saying these things. But he, he also, let's not extract Kanye from hip-hop and, like, the origins around his generation in hip-hop. Mm -hmm. He was up against half of an, an MC nation that was naming themselves after white men, right, who were supposed to be self-made, who were supposed to be a la Trump in this very kind of flashy, mm -hmm. uh, screw you, I do me kind of ilk. And so there is an attraction to, I think, what he associates with braggadocio and bravery and, 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 and radical free thought. However, you're wearing a MAGA hat as though that's not sheepish. Right, we ain't do that, though. <laughs> we ain't do that part. We still said F the police. We Absolutely. still said my president is black. Absolutely. And so know, did he. And so did he. And that's why. And so did he. And that's what I'm worried so, about. So, Michael, um, Kanye tweeted just a few hours ago. He tried to clarify this, right? And so I'm going to put these words up. He said, to make myself clear, of course I know that slaves did not get shackled and put on a boat by free will. My point is for us to have stayed in that position, even though the numbers were on our side, oh, means God. that we were they mentally were. enslaved. The reason why I brought up the 400 years point is because we can't be mentally in prison for another 400 years. We need free thought now. Even the statement was an example of free thought. It was just an idea. So he's backtracking, but does that, it's still, does that make sense? No, it doesn't, Don. I mean, look, I think even a cursory understanding of uh, slavery and the history of slave people or, or enslavement would have better uh, positioned him to make a more accurate and historically factual statement. He did not. 
uh, the premise of his, of his statement or of his tweets, rather, that he is a free thinker is somewhat absurd to me. And, and intellectually speaking, I would advise Kanye to pick up uh, a book written by Immanuel Kant back in the 1700s, uh, The Critique of Pure Reason. Uh, perhaps that would better prepare him uh, with the necessary tools to be able to truly be a free thinker because what he said is not a free thinker. Mm -hmm. There's nothing genius about it. It's, it's blatant ignorance and it's, an, it's embarrassing. And for all the young people yeah. who have invested in him, uh, who go out and buy his sneakers, who buy his albums, what do you say to those individuals? Be it's because of them he is where he is at currently. Yeah. He owes those folks an explanation. Yeah. Uh, yes. So so listen, and, and, and we have you here, you're, you're a black conservative. Again, this is not about politics, although people are trying to frame it that way. This well, Don, it's not, not. It's like the difference, yes, I am a black conservative, but I, I, can, uh, I can tell you that the reason why I'm a conservative, right? I can explain the epistemological uh, definition right. of conservatism versus liberalism. Right. I have spent time reading books by Edmund Burke and, and uh, John Locke and Michael Oakeshott and Robert Nozick, who all have their own issues, uh, as Mark Lamont Hill can, can factually state. But with that stated, my belief system is grounded upon an intellectual exploration of something. Kanye's is not. There's a distinct difference between the two. I hope he's watching, because you just <laughs> preached right there. <laughs> Kanye recently <laughs> spoke with radio host Charlemagne the God. That interview came out today. Here's part of what he said. Why you got to keep reminding us about slavery? Why don't you show us, put Michael Jordan on a $20 bill? But like. Harriet Tubman was a slave who rebelled, though. Like, her and that turned in a different frequency, though. They kind of were like you when you say you didn't feel like being controlled. Yeah, you know what? It's funny, like, my boy Tremaine tweeted, you know, a picture of me and Virgil, and he said, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. And all these people got mad. It's like, how can you compare them to that? Man. I know this is going to cause an uproar, but certain, certain icons is just too far in the past and not relatable. <laughs> wow. It's wow. stunning, right? It's stunning on so many levels. First of all, Again, this idea of why we're still talking about slavery is a right-wing, alt-right talking point. This idea about black-on-black -black crime, right-wing talking point. This idea, oh, everything he, he said. He brought that up today. And I, I, yeah. I was like, I, I wanted the guys in the room, I, and, and, you know, Van was amazing, to mm -hmm. say, black people kill each other because of proximity. White people kill each other because of proximity. Right. All, because they live together. See, but there you go with that data again. You keep using these facts, right. which right. contradict Kanye's <laughs> feelings. You can't keep doing that in the Kanye universe. That's the problem, and we have to keep pushing it. And that's why this is, conversation is necessary. It's not to persuade Kanye. Kanye probably can't be persuaded, but it's to persuade the people who watch this conversation so that they know. Do we but have Don, time to run Van's? Don, Can we run Van's yeah. soundbite right now? Okay, so this is Van, writer Van Lathan. Was clearly I've said he was passionate, and, and it was across the room. Yeah. And then he had some words of choice for Kanye. Watch this. I actually don't think you're thinking anything. I think what you're doing right now is actually the absence of thought. And the reason why I feel like that is because, because Kanye, Kanye, you're entitled to your opinion. You're entitled to believe whatever you want. But there is fact and real world, real life consequence behind everything that you just said. The rest of us in society have to deal with these threats to our lives. We have to deal with the marginalization that has come from the 400 years of slavery that you said for our people was a choice. Frankly, I'm disappointed, I'm appalled, and brother, I am unbelievably hurt by the fact that you have morphed into something, to me, that's not real. Yeah. Clarity, clarity, <laughs> clarity. But, so, but, but there's, there's an interesting piece that happens there. I don't know if you saw the, the tail end What he that. says, you need to be responsible. Kanye wanted to hug him. But so Kanye's mm -hmm. like, I'm, I, I'm sorry if I hurt you, brother. I'm sorry if I hurt you. And but so Don, they begin... Hang on, let her finish. So, let her, I'll let, let you me, Let me just make this point. I, I think it's kind of interesting the way that Kanye emotes, right? So he has mm -hmm. these one-on-one -on -one relationships and kind of extrapolates what happens in a one-on-one -on -one and projects that onto the whole. So he loves Trump because you've met him three times, and so that's your boy, and so that's his reasoning for standing for him. And so I feel like similarly in this situation, you see the side of Kanye after this, where there's a genuine moment where 
he it's just dawning on him like, that wow. he actually impacted someone. Right. And right. in that second, He's ready to move on. He wants to hug you. Yeah. He goes into this whole free love yeah, yeah. thing, which is another Good, Good, Michael. Yeah. But this is why, you know, I was going to say, this is why we have to be so careful uh, about considering people geniuses, right? So many people say Kanye's a genius. He, without a doubt, he's had a successful music career. He's done fairly well for himself. He's gained so much of the world. And yet, despite all of the advancements that he has made, economically speaking, he's still so ignorant of all the, the, the encounters, if you will, that occur between human nature and the human experiences and why certain people uh, are impacted by certain things differently and how marginalized groups of people struggle in comparison to those who are not marginalized at all. I mean, Don, the fact of the matter is, is this, right? If you're enlightened, if, if you're an independent free thinker, then you have sort of gone through the process of, of from benightment to, to being free. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the allegory of Plato's cave where they're the individuals who, are, who see these shadows before them and they believe that the shadows they see in front of them is true. But it's not true. It's not true at all. And that's what's so troubling about this, that we're having this conversation about this guy with this huge platform. Yeah. But so many people but who follow him, who, who would take black, those I, words I, as I, truth. I, I, but I don't want to be a genius. Yeah. He's a, it, and that's just it. You don't have to be a genius at everything. No, you don't. You, Neil deGrasse Tyson can't make bobs. Yeah, that's you know right. what I'm saying? That's right. And, and, I wouldn't call, I, I push back on politics. that, Mark. Mark, yeah. I push back on that at all. He's not a genius whatsoever. And we need to stop just using that okay. term so loosely and freely. Yeah. Here, here's my problem. Don't you better listen to Dark Twisted Fantasy again. Yeah. <laughs> he got busy. I'm just yeah. saying. I, 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 I got to take, take a break. Not, I got to take, gonna take gonna a break. But it sounds to me like he thinks it's um, that you can't have one with, it's a choice. That you can't have self-pride and be positive and try to... Um, and try to improve yourself and have all those things that where you're going to better yourself, better your community, and still know right. and understand history. It's a right-wing strong argument. It's, so it's, it's like it's a right -wing he doesn't argument. understand that you can do both you of those You can be critical and, and, and have responsibility. And I'm a conservative, and that, that Don, and I'm still aware of my blackness. Yeah. Like, I come play, on. That argument has Except for that Kanye genius argument. <laughs> that yeah, was some anti-microaggression. We got a lot to talk about.